Well, look, I think people recognize that the president is willing to sacrifice uh, some companies uh, on the altar of a greater good uh, in order to be able to make it so that the Chinese are not going to be able to but let's just say do all their Belt and Road Initiative, also t challenge our own hegemony worldwide. These are the big issues, Wilf and Sarah. It's not just soybeans and it's not just machine parts. And I think that the president recognizes and feels with a 3.6% uh, unemployment and a 3.2% GDP. When can you take them on if not now? I mean, I know you've been supportive of that view, Jim. And also, you know, just on the market action, you've been warning, I think, I've now been so the time. Negative. I mean, this weekend no, I got people negative. saying, Jim, I never heard you this negative. It's cautious time, right? Yeah, right? I mean, I it's just time said to take some I, chips off the table. I and so you're right. Was, so the question is, how long does this go? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Look, I, I think that what's happening is, is that we've got two touch points, uh, and they could be a one-two punch. Had to. I mean, look, if the Uber deal <laughs> fails, if it's like what happened with Lyft, and if the president uh, continues to tweet that it's going to happen at 12:01. AM on Friday. Well, we got to get past this. Maybe it's going to take till Monday. Uh, if, but if the president has a nice tweet and says, you know what, I'm going to put it off for a couple months, then we can rally. But you know what? We got to get through this week. And that's why I wanted people to raise cash. I know this weekend a lot of people came up to me and said, Jim, you are so, uh, so bearish. You're so negative. I said, no, I hate this week. I've been saying this week is going to be a problem for two months. And here it is. And wow, it's a problem. And, and Jim, if people want to raise cash, should they do it across their whole portfolio or pick some individual China exposed stocks? Because there was some odd movement today. Starbucks, for example, one of the relative outperformers, and they've got a significant play in China. Yeah, that was interesting because their uh, their chief competitor is actually raising money. I don't know. Well, if I wanted people to take profits before down for you know, down two percent. You know, as it goes down two percent, you're going to have to start looking for things soon. Remember, you're a tweet away from around, I, which is kind of amazing. But one tweet, and you're going to have to say, you know what, why did I sell after being down 2 3%? So I want to see, I want to watch it now. You know, the, the time to take something off the table aggressively was yesterday or earlier this morning. But now I've got to wait and see just because I just feel like the president watches the Dow just like you and I. It's sector specific, Jim, any any groups to be more cautious of, given the ratcheting up of trade tensions? As you say, Goldman Sachs warning on hardline retail stocks as they're next in line. For yeah, instance. you know, I was in touch with a bunch of retailers today and they all have the same problem. They all they all have uh, they all import a lot of stuff from China. Uh, so that group could be trouble. But then again, it is domestic. So, I mean, if it goes down, it's got a good yield. There's something that I actually want to buy because I don't think the, the worries are I think the worries are somewhat overblown. Uh, but I listened to the Polaris CEO and I know Scott and that was uh, that was earth shaking that he said that that's not what you want to hear. Uh, I do feel that uh, that there are a lot of areas in healthcare that are going to come back in vogue and the consumer product goods stories. I don't know. They held up pretty well. I mean, when you want PepsiCo at 118, it's not going to get there. All right, we'll see what happens. Jim, thank you. We'll be oh, watching the show it? tonight. What do you mean? I have more to say. I was teasing your show, 6 p.m. Well, yeah, well, you like have more to say. I mean, if I'm so going to be in for a dime, I'm going to be in for a dollar. I mean, come right, on, let's go quick... there for a second. Wait a second. Okay, you want to do quick reaction on Lyft well, earnings? I mean, How do you Corvo feel about that massive? Good. I thought that'd be oh, bad. Boss. That's not Cuervo, that's Corvo. Electronic Arts was good. I thought that'd be bad. Papa John's was Lyft? good. I thought that'd be bad. That's not bad. Let's contain this to ABC, to Apple, to Boeing, and to CAT, because that's what the president's looking at. I actually know that. Isn't that crazy? All right, but, now I'm but done. But, Jim, isn't it, is, isn't it fair to say tonight's earnings aren't going to change the sentiment from today? Oh, but, you know, you got to keep your eye on everything, right? I mean, Lyft wasn't a complete and utter disaster. And, you know, we, we saw that, that it's entirely possible that they do Uber right, that Morgan Stanley does a great job. And, and I, I think that's, you know, there's, there's things now. There's things now to look at, down 2% after being down 1%, that make me want to say, okay, listen, maybe we don't have to be so precipitous, but we do need to see something that says that the Uber deal is going to work or that the president's less hard line. And I don't think we're going to get the latter, but we could get the former.